Good morning, folks. We've got a space weather watch, interesting science articles, something very disturbing, and then some good news at the end. Let's get started with our star at spaceweathernews.com. When we find the last 24 hours on the sun, we're very quiet. We've got a calm, Earth-facing half of the sun, but with those coronal holes departing. Their solar wind is expected to arrive at Earth within 24 hours and spark geomagnetic storms on top of the unrest we've seen already from the phi angle flip. Those yellow bars at the bottom are expected to creep up into red when the coronal hole stream arrives. If anyone remembers that science fight amongst astronomers regarding whether or not the sun's chromosphere is magnetized, there is not going to be an argument very much longer. Excellent new mission poised to scope the deep solar atmosphere and the magnetism there like never before. Up next, we're looking at the boundaries of the LLSVPs. Earth's internal skeleton, and a new paper finds the ultra-low velocity zones peripheral to the LLSVPs may be an agglomeration, just as we saw with the last paper asking about composition of internal structures. Meanwhile, the LLSVPs themselves are not accumulated, but protrusions from the core. Folks, meet two scientists studying Earth's rotation glitches with only half the story trying to determine the source of specific length of day changes and when the moon can't account for it all, they ask if local cosmic expansion is to blame for the length of day glitches in Earth's rotation. If veteran observers are wondering, hey, did they look at all of those well-published sources of solar storms and geomagnetic jerks for Earth's rotation? No, they did not, which would make you more aware of the peer-reviewed literature on this topic than those professors. The next one is from the annual meeting of the Radio Science Union, recognizing that numerous lower atmosphere aspects are controlled by space weather and the injection of energy into the ionosphere, which couples with the atmosphere. There are a number of ways this occurs, but the most invasive travels up and down the global electric circuit flows on the axis of the atmospheric pressure rotation. That's solar climate forcing. Up next, folks, if you don't believe in Agenda 21, if you don't see it playing out before us, I don't think the internet can help you. This was the first attempt to take the world from us about two decades ago, and it flopped. The land use map of the U.S. was shot down unanimously in Congress. And why wouldn't it be? 30% of the country off limits, 50% highly restricted. Pack the humans into little cell living spaces in 100 story tall buildings in 200 to 100 million person megacities. It's literally the scariest and most horrifying plan ever. But it died in Congress, right? Wrong. It's back, and you may have heard of the 30 by 30 plan. This is absolutely 100% a different mask on the same horse. The goal is to crush the economy and create desperation, and then build back better with their new paradigm of a caste system and slavery. For real. That's what's happening to us right now with COVID being so overplayed, with the mandates, loss of jobs, economic strife, labeling half of us domestic terrorists. Many of you complain that I should leave politics out of this, but this is plainly not politics. This is good versus evil, and the prize is Earth. I wish I was following up a happier story for this, but alas, folks, we have found a way around Colorado's laws, and our store is back. For those who don't know, Frontman turns 37 tomorrow and would greatly appreciate your checking out the books for kids, the books for adults, limited quantity only until next year, and also at the bottom, all the Observer Ranch donation plaques and commemorations. More than ever, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.